<laughs> is this real? Is it fake? We're gonna find out in this video how you can turn yourself into a hyper-realistic metahuman for free using Unreal Engine. And an iPhone. I'm going to be doing all of this on a laptop, which is the MSI Stealth Studio 16, coming in with the GeForce RTX 4060 GPU combined with the Intel Core i7 processor. Quick spoiler, this thing is a beast and it handled it just as well as my PC at home did. And to show you guys how power efficient this is, I'm actually gonna do this whole edit in a cafe. Okay, so we've changed location to another cafe because I can. First of all, this is super lightweight, very feather light, so I can carry it around anywhere and continue my work, whether it's from home, or from a cafe, just like that. And it's powerful enough to do that while I'm moving around. First, we're gonna 3D scan me using the iPhone and convert me into a metahuman. And lastly, we're gonna attach all of my face movements to that metahuman to create a scene. First things first, we're gonna create a new folder. We're gonna store all of the assets in here along with our project. Next, you're gonna open up Epic Games Launcher and download and install Unreal Engine. If you have never used it before, this is gonna take some time to install, that's fine. Now, when you're creating the project, you can enable ray tracing if you're using a strong enough graphics card and we are using the GeForce RTX 4060 for this, so I'm going to be enabling that. Now, after your project's been created, go back to your Epic Games Store, tap on the Marketplace and search for Meta Humans. Here, you wanna install the Meta Human plugin. After you've downloaded, tap on Install and make sure the version of your Unreal Engine matches and tap on Install. You can launch up your project. There's gonna be a prompt telling you that there's new plugins, tap on Manage Plugins and enable Meta Human, tap on Yes and then Restart Now. Now, during this process, you might see it asking you to enable a bunch of things or restart a couple of times. Make sure you do that. This is perfectly normal. This next step is pretty important. Go into your settings, project settings, search for cache and turn up your cache size to two gigs instead of one. This is going to run things a lot smoother. Now, before we do anything else, I need to scan myself in 3D. And for this, we're using the Polycam app. It's very simple to use. Instructions are in the description. You're going to create a 3D model of yourself. Next, you're gonna tap on upload and all of this is gonna be done on the cloud. Later in the app, you're gonna get a 3D model of yourself along with textures, but remember to close your hair because if you don't, this is what you're gonna look like. So I did this again with a shower cap on my head because if you don't, you're gonna end up looking like a mushroom and no one wants that. Next up, you're gonna export that 3D object as a GLTF file and import it into your computer. Go into your assets folder and there you should have it. I have two versions, one without the cap, one with the cap. We're gonna be using the cap. With an Unreal Engine, open up your content drawer. Here you're gonna right click, create a new folder and we're gonna call this Meta Human. From the assets folder, you're gonna go into your 3D scan and drag and drop in the cap version straight into this folder. Now you're gonna have a bunch of assets that this created on its own textures, normal maps, all of that. Don't worry about it. Create a new folder and drop it in here. We're gonna call this the 3D scan folder. No cables, nothing. And I'm able to easily, look at that, look at that movement. Not even plugged in. Love it, love it. Now with the MSI Stealth 16 Studio, you're getting the GeForce RTX 4060 GPU combined with the Intel i7 processor, which is why I'm capable of making metahumans in a cafe. Right click, metahuman animator, metahuman identity. Rename this whatever you want and then tap into it. Once you're inside, click on create component at the top and then choose from mesh. Here we're gonna bring in the 3D object that we created earlier, so make sure you find that, tap on it, and it's gonna import that 3D object right here for us to choose and optimize. First thing you wanna do is turn off lit to unlit. Next thing we're gonna do is go into your field of view at the top with the camera and change that to 20. Tap on the plus sign at the bottom, click OK. Rename this to front. Then you're gonna right click on this and turn on auto tracking. With that, you can already see it recognize my eyebrows, my eyes, my mouth, and the lines next to my mouth. Right click again and lock camera tap on body and select a body type that makes sense. After you're done with that, go back to your neutral pose and tap on meta human identity solve. Gives us a few seconds. It's very, very quick. Next, tap on mesh to meta human and select the second option, which gives you the full head and skeleton. This takes a bit of time, so just be a little bit patient. After that's done, just tap on OK and click Save and close out of this. And with that, you should see a few objects appear in your content drawer. Now at the top, tap the plus and tap on Quixel Bridge. Go into your Meta Humans on the left and choose My Meta Humans. Now the object we created is going to be up here. You can see Omar underscore Meta that I created earlier. Tap on Start MHC. This is going to launch up your browser and here you customize your Meta Human. Okay, so now we're, the meta human that we just created, we're gonna take it to the meta human website where you can actually configure add on skin on top, eyes, hair, all of that is gonna be done on here. This is browser based. 
So let's get into that. There we have me without anything. So first we're gonna go into skin and assign a new skin tone. Just go into what makes sense to you. This is like a video game. You can basically customize and make it look exactly how you want your metahuman, whether you want it closer to you or not as similar to you. You can do all of that here very, very easily. Go back to the Quixel bridge and download this version of the metahuman. After it's done downloading, tap add, and it's gonna add that version into the project. Make sure you enable anything that you need to, missing projects, whatever, and restart if it prompts you to do that. Okay, so now, like I said, we are gonna be using the iPhone to get the tracking data. A lot of other people will be using proper tracking suits with a face tracker and all. We can't afford that. So what we're gonna do is find a cheaper alternate, which is using the Live Link app on the iPhone to get the tracking data using the face ID from our face. Which is pretty simple. Go into the Live Link app and it's very straightforward. Go into your settings. You're gonna change the mode to the Meta Human Animator. Start recording and what you're gonna do is neutral face, look at the camera, then turn right very slowly. Make sure both your eyes are visible, come back. Turn left very slowly, make sure both your eyes are visible, come back again, and then open your mouth to show your teeth, which is gonna give us all the tracking data we need later. You're gonna tap on export, export this as a zip anywhere on your phone and then you're going to transfer this over to the computer with the name training now within unreal you're going to create a new folder and we're going to call this train right click in here meta human animator and click on capture source and rename this capture data open this up and then in the drop down menu you're going to select live link face archives click on the source path and choose exactly where you'd saved the live link data that we got from the iPhone application. Hit save and close out of this menu. Next, you're gonna tap on tools and then tap on capture manager. Now we're gonna feed in the footage we just brought in. Tap on capture data and you should see your training footage right in there. Add to queue and then tap on the import button. This is gonna take just a few seconds and it's gonna import in that video clip. Next, you're gonna right click, go into your MetaHuman animator and choose on MetaHuman identity. This is what we're gonna assign the training data to. So call it train ID, double tap on that. And then on the top left again, you're gonna have create components and there's gonna be from mesh and from footage. You're gonna choose from footage this time and choose your footage. You should see your footage load into your timeline. There's gonna be a proper scrollable timeline at the bottom where you can see the expressions you made along with your teeth. What you're gonna do is go all the way back to the first neutral face frame, click on the plus button, and then click OK, double tap, and rename that to front. Tap on the camera move button, and we're gonna navigate forward a little bit when I turn right. Make sure both of the eyes are visible, press plus again, double tap on that, and name that right. Do the same thing again, but this time find where you turn left. Again, make sure both eyes are visible when you do this. Tap on the plus button and rename this to left. Once you've done that, you can see that we have created these three keyframes that you can go through to see all the different looks. At the top, tap Meta Human Identity Solve. This will take just a few seconds. Then you're gonna go on the left side to Body and choose your body type. Then go to Mesh to Meta Human, select the second option. Go into your poses on the left, tap on Add, Add Pose, and Add Teeth. Now scroll over on the timeline where you showed your teeth in the frame. What you're gonna do next is tap on the plus button like we did before. It's gonna create a frame again, click OK. Double tap on that and rename that teeth. Next, you're gonna go onto the right side where it says teeth. You're gonna turn off the lower teeth and the lower two. At the top, you're gonna to click on fit teeth. And this is the last step of the process. You're gonna tap on prepare for performance. Now this process is kind of slow and it takes a while because it's using a lot of your RAM. Luckily with this laptop, I'm getting 16 GB of RAM, which is pretty good. What is recommended is 64 gigs of RAM. With my PC back home, I have 32 gigs of RAM and that one takes about 10 minutes to complete. While this one takes about 10 to 15 minutes as well, which is pretty impressive. The process was definitely much better because of this laptop and it coming installed with NVIDIA Studio drivers. It comes with a range of benefits. First and probably the most important is faster rendering times. Studio drivers help your graphics card with features like Dynamic Boost 2.0 to intelligently shift power in your system to give you maximum performance. The drivers have been optimized to run creative software like video editing and 3D softwares. So combining the NVIDIA Studio features with the GeForce RTX 4060 GPU was good enough to handle something as intense as Unreal Engine and create some really cool looking results. Okay, so one thing I noticed while creating this MetaHuman is that the laptop didn't heat up as much 
as I expected it to, especially because of how heavy Unreal Engine is. But that's because of the cooling and the ventilation in this laptop. So when I turn on the fan, it keeps the laptop cool and lets me do whatever crazy tasks I want to do. And with that, your training is done. Now you have a train ID, which is going to know exactly how to move your mouth when you're speaking. Go into your meta human that we created earlier, the blueprint, the Omar underscore meta, which was done from the website. You can import, drag and drop that in. It takes a few seconds and then you should see the full body appear here. This does look odd, but that's fine because we have no textures yet. You're just going to click on restart now so you can apply all of the shaders and textures and make sure you save that. But once you come back in again, you can see it right there. Now it looks odd that that's because we're still unlit. Change it to lit and there you go. It looks very, very similar to what I look like if I have long hair. So now I'm going to record the performance, which is the final thing that the meta human is going to follow the movement of my face. And with that, obviously, I'm going to be doing that with the iPhone once again. So I'm just going to put it right up here and we're going to open up the live link face app. The more expressive you are, the better it's going to be in the video because your meta human is actually going to move like that and not look lifeless. So try to do that if you can. After you transfer that over to your PC, create a new folder in Unreal Engine. Within that folder, right click, Meta Human Animator, and Capture Source. Once again, you're gonna call this Final Performance, open it up, change the drop down to the Live Link Face Archives, and then for the source, you're gonna select the Final Performance clip that you just recorded using your iPhone. Once again, tap on Tools and Capture Manager. Here, we're gonna feed in the Final Performance footage just like we did before, add to queue, and then import. It's gonna take a few seconds. After that's done, close out of that. Right click, Meta Human Animator and Meta Human Performance. Rename this to whatever you would want it to be. Double tap on it. And then on the right side, you're gonna find Footage Capture, drop down menu, select your final performance. This is gonna show you the acting that you just did at the end. And then for your Meta Human Identity, drop down and we're gonna select the ID, train ID that we created earlier. Tap on process on the top left, and you can already see the meta human is moving along with my facial expressions, which is pretty cool. Once it is done, you can tap on export animation, rename that to whatever you want. I'm gonna call it final acting, click on save. And then for your drop down menu here, make sure that face archetype skeleton is selected because this is what's gonna output your animation. Once that's done, you can close out of this menu after saving, click on the little slate button at the top and add a level sequence. You can name this whatever you want. I'm gonna call it final sequence. You're gonna tap on your character and it gets an orange outline around it, which is good. Tap on the green track button at the bottom, actor to sequence and select your character. Give it a few seconds and you're gonna see a few things appear at the bottom, a bunch of controls for the body parts, but we're gonna focus on face first. Tap on the track button, animation and choose your final acting. Delete the face control board control rig and just like that you can see the animation has been applied to your face. Lastly, you've got the MSI center which is the control hub of this laptop. So everything from monitoring your CPU and GPU usage to the RAM percentage being used to the temperature, the thermals of the laptop can be controlled from there. This is also where you put it into performance mode or gaming mode to give you the best out of this laptop. Essentially, it's the brain of the laptop, especially when you're creating. A really good job with the design as well. Everything looks great and it controls the laptop really well. Okay, so that's pretty much almost completely done. The only last thing left is to match the environment, kind of like our office environment. So I'm gonna make a very quick scene to make the three-point light setup like we have here within the meta human world so that I can light him up exactly how we light our real videos in real life. So this is gonna be a quick time lapse. You guys wanna know how to do this? Everything is going to be in the description. Okay, with everything done, we're finally rendering the scene and this is what it looks like. Come check it out. 29% uh, done. It's rendering each frame one by frame and we can already see this is in low quality preview and it looks that freaking good. If you want detailed instructions, the links are going to be down below. Those are the tutorials that we followed. And honestly, I have to say this in the video, this would not have been possible without Tarvin, who is behind the camera right now. Tarvin, wave up and down. That's Tarvin. Tarvin is the reason all of this happened. He figured all of this out. So huge shout out to Tarvin. And that's how we created all of this using the MSI Stealth 15 Studio. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you again in the next video. Until then, take care and subscribe for more content like this.